So today I'm talking about P2714 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P2714 code? Well, it's a pressure control solenoid D performance stuck off. And what does this mean? Well, basically transmissions have a lot of solenoids built into them and transmissions work off of fluid pressure. And these solenoids are helping to control where the fluid's flowing and different things like this. And the computer is controlling these solenoids. It's turning them on and off at different times. And this controls the pressure of the fluid flowing out through the transmission, which allows it to shift at the right times and different things like this. But when you get this P2714 code, the computer's seeing a problem with one of these solenoids, mainly with this pressure control solenoid D. And so it's gonna have to be troubleshooted to know why. And so what would be some possible causes of a P2714 code? Well, the first thing that's gonna cause this is low fluid or really super dirty transmission fluid. So the first thing to do, if possible, is go check your transmission fluid and be sure it's at the right level. Some newer vehicles, they no longer let you check the transmission fluids. So there won't be no dipstick. You won't be able to check it. But if you can, it's a good idea to go check it and be sure it's at the right level because low transmission fluid causes a lot of problems. Also, dirty transmission fluid is also going to cause issues. There's a filter located inside the transmission. This filter can get clogged up and cause problems. So if that transmission fluid looks really dirty, it might be a good idea to go have it replaced along with the filter located inside the transmission, especially if it's overdue as part of regular maintenance. But the first thing that's going to cause this is low or dirty transmission fluid. The next thing that could cause this is a bad control solenoid D or the wiring going to the solenoid. Basically, there might be some kind of problem with that solenoid. It might have gone bad or the wires going to it. There might be like an open or a short or something like that. If you do go to work on your vehicle, you will need to get a diagram which solenoid is doing what and where it's located and things like this. Since it will be different, it will vary depending on the vehicle and the transmission. But basically, you locate that control solenoid D and then you go and test it to be sure that it's good. There's some different ways to go about testing these solenoids. If you have a good OBD2 scan tool, you can use that. You can also use a multimeter to test these. Basically, all these solenoids have a rated ohms or what they're supposed to be at. So you use a multimeter and you check it for ohms. And if it's outside of this range or what it's rated to be at, then you know it's bad. You know it needs to be replaced. So for example, say this solenoid was rated to be at 12 ohms and you go and check it and it's at 10.7, then you know there's some kind of issue and you know you need to replace it. Also, the wiring going to the solenoid can also be checked. It's very common for these solenoids to be getting 12 volts to them. But again, be sure to get a diagram or schematics for your particular vehicle to know for sure what's going on. But basically use a multimeter and you just go and check the wires and be sure you're getting voltage to that solenoid. Because if there's any problem in the wiring, like an open or a short, then that's going to cause problems. But the next thing that could cause this is a bad pressure control solenoid D or the wiring going to it. And the next thing that's going to cause this is that there's some kind of transmission issue going on. And basically something's gone wrong inside the transmission that's just stopping that control solenoid D from working. So this could be something like a bad pump, a bad valve body. One of the passages that the fluid is flowing through going to that solenoid D got clogged up or something like that. Usually if there is some kind of transmission problem like that, you're going to get a lot of other codes. So if you are getting a lot of other codes, be sure to pay attention to that. But the next thing that's going to cause this is some kind of transmission issue. And the last thing on the list is going to be a bad computer. And this is going to be like a bad transmission control module or a bad powertrain control module or something like that. And this isn't too common. It's fairly rare for a computer to go bad. Usually when you get a P2714 code, it's going to be something else. There's some kind of transmission issue or a problem with that solenoid or the wiring going to it. But these computers do fail sometimes. If you do think it's a bad computer, be sure that the battery is good, that the alternator is charging good, that it's got a good ground going to it. Because all these computers, they need a good, stable power supply, or it could throw them off and just cause them to have issues. But the last thing that can cause this is a bad computer. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P2714 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.